Hey, Team McDill, it's Colonel Ben Johnson with a special guest, and we're back at Lead Conversations, and this is going to be a really powerful story for our airmen, for our team, about resilience and about fighting through some incredible challenges. And uh, I'm just really excited for you to get to know Tech Sergeant Antonio Howard. Sergeant Howard, thanks for being willing to do this, being willing to help airmen, being willing to share your story. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, you know, we ran into each other in your squadron at the security, at Helton Hall there in, mm -hmm. a couple, maybe a month or so ago, yes. and we just got to chatting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you were bold enough to share a little bit of your story with yes, me. Sir. And when I just got a little glimpse into it, I'm like, wow, this is so powerful. Yes, sir. Um, you know, particularly for, you know, in the season we're in, I think in the Air Force, where we are really challenged with a lot of stress. And, yes, sir. You know, the resiliency of our airmen is um, really tested. Yes, sir. And you know, I just thought if we could, you know, airmen need to hear your story because the way in which you've fought through some really tough stuff could be a help, could be a help to other people. And I just appreciate you being willing to. Yes, sir. To share a little bit of that. And yes, sir. So I was wondering, maybe you just take us back. Okay. Uh, so born and raised in a small town in Georgia called Dublin, okay. Dublin, Georgia. Grew up in a house um, until the age of six in a house that, like, I think it was like a two bedroom home with like eight people. And at the age of six, we were placed in foster care. So we go to, to a foster home, and um, my sister and I together, and I was just lucky to have a, a great foster mother. Wow. Was your, um was your biological mother there also when you were separated? And, or is it just is it that interaction with your aunt that you remember? Mm, my, foster, my biological mother was not there when, yeah. when, they when they took us, no. It's obviously so traumatic to lose something like that and to be pulled out of your family. You're six years old. I mean, I can't even really fathom what that would feel like. And are you, I mean, are you just like weeping every night? Are you just stone cold like, emotionally detached like how are you processing that at the time you know telephones were on the wall yeah right yeah. so I uh, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and sneaking to use the phone to call home you know and I'm crying I'm like come get me you know please come pick me up like my foster mother wasn't doing anything but yeah. it's a stranger you know I didn't know them you know, I didn't know so the other calling, kids there. You knew your phone number. You're six years I old, did. but you know your number, and no, you're no. calling home and mm -hmm. talking to your aunt or your or your mom. Or I was talking to my aunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what did she say? I mean, was she We're like, gonna get you. Yeah. We're gonna get you. That never happened. Things never got better. They got worse. So, I, when I turned 12. When you say they never got better, they got worse. Like, what does that mean? My mom never got her life together. To get her kids back. Showed up, I remember she showed up, she showed up to like a panel review one time where she was stabbed or something. You know, like sometimes she never showed up. So to me, that's not one of your kids, right? Yeah. What was going on in her life, do you know? Drugs. Mm -hmm. Drugs, heavy drugs. So when they, then you got to the point where you're 12, you said. Mm -hmm. So you're still with that family. The still whole with still with the family when wow. I turned 12. So and six years, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But yeah. my foster family, my foster mom, you know, that lady is amazing. Yeah. Like around just the time that I was there, she had so many kids. It wasn't just my sister and I. I think it was maybe like four more kids in there at the same time. You know, so you it to some people that might seem like a group home, but it wasn't. It was literally like. We saw no color, you know? It, we saw if you came in, you're my brother, you know, and we fought for each other, That's you awesome. know, like, you, or you're my sister and we fought for each other. It, doesn't, it didn't matter if you were white, it didn't matter if you were black, it, it, it didn't matter, you know, male or female, you know, that's who you are yeah. and, and you will be treated that way. And she did not play games, her or her uh, husband. and and. That's who taught me that, you know? It was her teaching, you know, and wow. certain mentors and stuff, you know? Was it, I mean, I'm sure it was, mm -hmm. incredibly hard for them to see you transition to Augusta? I mean, how did, mm -hmm. that, how did that go down? I mean, because it, I, I, you know, part of me thinks, well, they, they're hoping for, you know, a, a permanent 
solution, you know, mm -hmm. permanent home for you, permanent mm -hmm. family for you, and maybe that's how that, that looked. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so the state didn't necessarily want them to adopt. They weren't, you know, they weren't in a position to adopt. So, of course, when they sent us to Augusta, uh, that's what the state was looking for. I see. For you to have a, like you said, a permanent home. And um, I think the, the family, you know, that wanted to adopt us, I think they probably expected something different. Here I am, this country boy coming from Dublin, Georgia, and you all of a sudden just trying to tell me what to do. You're not showing me real love. You're showing me fake love. You know, uh, he would put me in the garage and like beat me with, you know, you know those things when you let up a blind, you, you kind of twist it, you know, yeah. and you know, it, it was just, it, I purposely wanted to leave, like I wanted to leave. So I got on the phone one day, I want to go back to mama's house. At that time, I didn't want to go to my biological house. That wasn't love. I wanted to go where I know I'm loved. And she probably was strict, right? But I know she loved me. That's why I want to go. I want to go home. And I just kept being bad. Whatever I could do for that man and his wife to say they don't want me, I wanted to do, you know? And, uh, and eventually, it, ha it worked. You know, they, I went back home. But he wouldn't even let me tell my sister. My sister didn't know I was gone. She didn't even know. Maya that's been my backbone since day one. He wouldn't even let me tell her bye. Wow. Did you end up going back to Mama's house? I did. Yeah. I did. And yeah. the state kind of facilitated that? Yes, sir. Wow. They did. And then is that where you stayed? The Until I raised my right hand. You know, we talked about when things get rough, you know, mm -hmm. and those things from your past come back. Has there ever been a point in your career where you were, you know, at some point as you're serving, you know, you're, you're as a defender mm -hmm. and something happens that, that locks you up again or that, uh, that really creates a lot of turmoil for you and then and how, how did you process that? Yes, sir. Um, hmm. So in 2018, I deployed, right? I was the, I went there. It was a hassle for me to actually deploy because of like medical reasons but I finally got there and like I'm excited. You know, I'm ready to be there and I was accused of something, um, maybe like a month in. And uh, it, it, if I felt as if no one was on my side, like no one, no one wanted to hear my side. You know, no one cared. And that was that took that time. I honestly felt like taking my life. I felt that no one cared. And the, there was a certain group of individuals that, to this day, I would go to bat for because if it wasn't for them, you got to put yourself around people. And those people have to put themselves around you to show that they yeah. care, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't just always go out and seek. Right. Because the right person will also you. seek you. Yeah. You know? They had to know that you needed help. Exactly. They had to know. And that's what they did. Wow. You know? And, and, and it, it, that kept me afloat. Yeah. And... You know, to this day, I, I owe them. And did that trigger something in you from the past? Yes, sir. It triggered because before I felt that, you know, if my own family didn't care and all these years go by, I'm doing just fine. And I get to a point where I need someone to care. And there was no one that cared except that certain, hand, you know, handful, right? But at that time, I'm not thinking about the handful, right? I was I, I received an article 15, you know, and uh, man, I'm tearing up now. It's all right. I still have videos where I was being sent home because of the issue, right? And uh, they threw me going away with a cake. Your friends? Yeah. yeah. And everyone was there to, you know, just show, you know, that they actually love me. And uh, that's what we need, man. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think 
through my life, though, I faced a lot of challenges. You know, I've, I've been molested. Uh, I've drawn drugs. I've done things I shouldn't have done. I've uh, said things to people I shouldn't have said. I've done a lot. I've thought about suicide, everything. Everything under the sun, I've probably done. Every single thing, almost. Now when, I mean, that's a lot. That is a lot to bear. And how did you, how did you find resiliency in the midst of that? You know, because any one of those things mm -hmm. that you've talked about um, could put an airman, mm -hmm. one of us, in a really dark place, mm -hmm. right? That they might not recover from. Mm -hmm. What was it that you did? Like, where, where did you reach to? And how did you find the strength to come back from every one of those things? Honest people, people. I put myself around the right people. And when I say the right people, that's what I mean. But someone that means it, someone that gets on you when you're bad and not in a, ta and, and not in a way where it's going to not hurt your feelings. You need to hurt my feelings. I need to know that I'm doing bad. I, but at the same time, you're lifted at the same time. You know, you can fuss at me, but then tell me how we're going to get through this, right? Yeah. And I will put myself around the right people, and that's what it was. You cannot get through something alone. Yeah. Do you think right now, for our airmen, at the 6th or around the Air Force, you think that's hard for them to do? To get, when they find themselves in a dark place mm -hmm. or they go through a trauma, that they don't want to turn to others? I know that's hard for them to do. I think at times, sir, um, if I may, so please don't take this the wrong way, we have to separate the Air Force. By me saying it is that, like, I respect your rank, but I respect you more as a person. And I think now people feel that they're selfish in a way, that it's all about them, and it's not about the other person. Does that make sense? I think so, it does. Like, because when you take that uniform off and you go in, off base, do anyone else know you're the wing commander? Just Ben Johnson, yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think when it comes to airmen or anyone, there's no such thing as leading from the top because you can always lead from the bottom. Yeah. I can share something with you that you've probably never gone through and it allows you to better understand me. And I think they have to get to the point where they really trust someone and it doesn't necessarily have to be their supervisor because, come on, you're not going to, if I, if I meet you and you're like, hey, you know, I'm your supervisor. I need you to tell me everything about you. You're going to be like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it just doesn't work like that. You can't it's, force that. You can't force it. Yeah. It's like a relationship. Yeah. You, you know, you can't go meet someone and you automatically trust them. Right. It's you built. Build it. You have to. And that's the issue now. And we have some leaders that say they're leaders that really don't show that they care. If I ask someone how they're doing, I'm waiting on a response. Yeah. I need to know. How are you? You know, and most of the time they'll come to you. Now, do you feel like there were times, though, in your career when things that happened to you, trauma, other events, mm -hmm. and then feel alone in that? and then have to decide what you're going to do about it. And, and if, if we have airmen that feel alone, like, like no one else feels this, no one else is going through this. Um, did you ever feel like that? And what would you tell an airman that feels that way? I would tell an airman that feels that way. Um, and I don't just, you know, I think people get to that point. You know, it's not just airmen. Of course. Everyone yeah. gets to that point. Or you probably have in your life and you can literally tell them, hey, like, whether you believe it or not, you value. No, uh, no, you do. You value. And you're able. So that makes you valuable. You see what I did right there? Yeah. 
You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they're like, what? You value. Well, why am I, why? You're asking me questions that you already know the answer to. And most of the time it's like relationship issues because there are airmen that's gone through way worse than what I've been through. To this day, they're probably still going through it. But until they put themselves around the right people, but now you're like, well, how do, how do they know they're the right people, right? Yeah. It, it, it's just something they have to find. But how can you find it if you're in your room? And the thing that you communicated to them is when you say your value, you're communicating that they have value, that they have exactly. worth, and they have to be able to see it mm -hmm. in themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's powerful. Everybody has a story. Every day that goes by, you are writing a new page and a new chapter to your story. How do you want it in there? <laughs> your values. Uh, Thanks, sir.